morning. I have Katrina here again with me today. She's going to help me. We're going to look at a breakdown of the uh, Eastern and semi-Western and we're going to extrapolate a little bit of something that Nadal uses in his swing that I think we can add to the Eastern and the uh, semi-Western to add racket head speed, velocity on the ball. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to improve. It's the RPMs that we're looking at. And if we looked at a doll, I'll try and do this right-handed. As he's setting up, you know, that racket is really high as he turns. Then what he does to bring the racket head down, I better turn mine over a little more. He uses a full Western. He draws the elbow back. Look where that racket head is. The racket head is back. Then he's getting this ulnar deviation before he swings into the ball. Now, as he does that, and he's coming down, he actually leans back a little bit. Uh, and I'll, demo I'll put a little clip in of both of those so that you can see that. Um, that's a compensation for the extreme grip. We don't necessarily need to do that. But if I want height on the ball, there is an advantage to keeping my weight back on my back leg. If I want to drive it, I'm keeping the weight a little more forward on the forward leg. And that transition is really important. Semi-Western has a tendency at the club level to be driven more not enough racket head speed for the top spin or it's inherently short because the effort is too much top spin and you're not uh, pushing your opponent back. The Eastern where the, it, it opens the racket a little more, we're going to get our depth. Where is the error? Where is the mistake? It's right here. Most players, and I'll do this with the uh, semi-western fence slide, they inherently turn the racket over level before they swing. Now I know Del Potro, if we looked at him, he does that. It's a completely different swing altogether. But at the club level, it is the mistake. And I don't know that it's necessarily delivered as much as it's inherently interpreted that how could I possibly be hitting a ball with the racket that's looking down? As I'm turning into it, it will open up and that's what we want. But in our minds at that point, when we get there is a tendency to turn the racket perpendicular. So we need to figure out a way, a method that we can prevent that from happening. In the swing path, we don't necessarily want things to stop or pause. It all should be connected. But to get away from this turning over, we need to substitute that motion with ulnar deviation. We need to get the racket to flick back. So I'm calling it the flick and through. As I swing at the ball, and it's coming, again, the mistake, it's flat. Players are coming through, and then they're trying to windshield wiper over. Look where the energy is going. Where we really should see on that semi-western, the racket's flat. As it's driving, it's opening itself up, and the racket is moving out and away with the ball as it's driving. We're going to look at what I've done to help players get away from doing this and feeling that flip. All right, we're going to do a little drill here and we're going to use a, a little tool that I have to work on that ulnar deviation. We're going to call that the flick and through and it's to, per, it's to change uh, a lot of my players' um, tendency is to turn the racket over flat and then through and that's what we're going to learn not to do. I'm going to have Katrina come over here and join me 
and she's gonna lay her racket on this ball and she's gonna roll it back to start feeling what that should feel like. And that's the first step that we really want. She's starting to get a feel for that ulnar deviation as opposed to turning the racket flat, which is what we wanna to do too early. It will turn flat on its own as we come in contact with the ball. It's <laughs> rotating in that fashion we just don't want to do it prematurely and that's where the problem with many club players is they get the racket back and it looks nice they turn it over flat and then through so i'm going to have katrina now she's going to start and we're going to go ahead and do it with the eastern first and she's going to turn lay the racket on it the racket's still kind of tipped up we're in eastern where we shouldn't be completely flat we're going to be tipped up but we're not gonna turn it level as she swings. She flicks kind of in a downward fashion, that ulnar deviation, and then she comes through that way. So remember, Eastern gives us depth just because the racket is more open. So you're going to be coming to this point, flick it down that way, and then swing forward and through. Right. Flick and through. Now don't move your arm, only your wrist that again. Keep your arm right here. Flip back. Whoop, and then through. That's it. Flip back and then through. So we want to minimize the length in the swing. So I don't want Katrina to move her arm back any further at that point. She's turned here. She flicks and through. Flick and through. Now it looks deliberate. Eventually it's going to be fluid with the swing and it'll all connect. Very nice. Flick and through. Good. Again. Flick and through. Can you do that without me? Flick and through. That's it. Start like uh, you're in your position to swing. I'll do that with you. So we're taking the racket back from our shoulder. Remember as we step out with our right leg, the racket head doesn't have to be necessarily flat, but at this point we're flicking and then through. Coming out to the side, we're flicking and then through, as opposed to, remember, the air would be getting over to the side, turning the racket flat and coming through, and that's what we're trying to avoid. It's a common mistake most players out here at the club level have, but we need that racket to go back and then open up as part of the forward path in the swing. All right, now I'm going to rally with Katrina. I'm going to give her a continental and some driving continental. We're going to use the same concept we were talking about a moment ago with that wrist flicking through. And look how my hand stays on top of the racket. It works for all the grips, continental, eastern, semi-western. A little bit later, I'm going to turn to eastern. And I don't have to lay the racket flat necessarily, but I want to get that ulnar deviation to drive the ball. If I want to get a lot more spin, we're going to use that ulnar deviation combined with an elbow draw to get a greater snap into the ball and uh, that racket head speed is going to give the spin not my deliberate effort to roll remember we're trying to get away from the windshield wiper and then i may pull out some semi-western with that draw where we are getting it flat the ulnar deviation the elbow and through pace of the ball rule is really important we talked about that earlier, same pace or less. So uh, let me hit a little bit with Katrina and we'll see how that goes. Again, strike zone balls. If the ball is in my strike zone, I'm gonna continue with Eastern when I get there. If it's out of my strike zone, well, I'm gonna go Continental. So let's start with Continental. You can watch me here as I rally with her. We'll go forward from there. Continental's nice too because I can feed her balls.
where's Continental? Now I'm gonna rally with her with the Eastern, but I'm not gonna rally with her. If it's not in my strike zone, I'll go back to Continental. But I'm starting in Eastern. I don't wanna put a lot of top spin, so you're not gonna see the elbow draw, but you should see the owner deviation we were talking about. Here we go, so I'm in Eastern. Uh, that's not a strike zone ball. We'll go back. Because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pinpointing balls. There we go. A little jam on that one. Inside side of the ball is what I'm looking for. As opposed to, remember, we talked about the mistake everybody makes. The racket's back. They turn it flat and come through. Instead, at that point, we went ulnar deviation. And remember the exercise that we're going to use to prevent that from happening. That's the big mistake. The big mistake, bringing the racket back, turning it level, and then trying to swing in that old windshield wiper. We're going to avoid altogether only be in the follow-through after it has nothing to do with the contact it's a terrible way to try and put top spin on the ball where is the energy going as I come across my body it's going that way I need to be driving the ball forward into the court a couple more here I use Katrina I use Continental on that one Continental on that one to give it right back to her that's a good one. Owner deviation and through. Simple. Face of the ball rule. I can get a good drive and I don't have to put anything into it. Owner deviation and through. Real. Continental, it's not in my strike zone. Pushed her back with it. Nice shot. I didn't think it was coming over. Let's start adding that elbow draw. So you can see that. Now this is with the Eastern, and this is where I think we can get more depth in the semi-Western. But we're gonna get that elbow draw to start putting more topspin on the ball. Face of the ball rule. Same pace or less. That doesn't mean I'm adding velocity to get it across the court, but I'm using that technique to help my racket head speed go up. So here we go. Ulnar deviation, but a little bit of elbow, and I got too anxious on that one. I wanted to demonstrate it. Here we go. Eastern, little elbow, and there's the extra racket that she did. You can see how that jump actually went over the fence as it landed on Brent's Katrina's racket. I didn't need to do much. Which is really the point. I don't want to add more effort into my swing, I want to let the technique do the work for me. Nice. Excellent. Look at that volley. Mid court. Here we go. A little racket head speed because I drew the elbow back. It's a perfect one. Racket head speed. Draw it back. level of effort by using a technique of drawing the elbow to make up for where most people are muscling. I don't want to do that. So again, it's changing, it's redefining it. 
you know, rather than how strong, if I, if I want to use all my strength, I, I, it would be out of control. We want a technique that's doing it for us. Adds velocity, adds racket head speed, but I don't need to do that physically. Technique doesn't. Here we go, Continental, because it's not on my strike zone. semi-western. Fence. Slide. The rack is down elbow and through. Here we go. Slide. Through. Fence. Slide. Through. The tough part about that for Katrina is that kick at the end there. It's going to be hard for her. I'm going to slow that down a little bit just for technique. Fence. Slide. Here we go. I've learned that the inconsistency with most of my students with the semi-western, it's almost not worth using it in the backcourt because inherently it's short. So I actually, funny thing, I teach them to use it in the midcourt as an approach shot, go to semi-western and use it, that heavy top spin as they're approaching the net. It's a little bit more accurate because inherently if it's shorter, they're not gonna hit it long. If you're hitting along from the baseline, use it. If you're not, you should be going eastern. Eastern, opening that face a little bit is going to give you the depth. A couple more. 